today uh, we are getting to our final recommendations and, and taking votes on uh, final recommendations on license fees uh, uh, for the board. Um, Nelly, you can start recording. I will do so. Uh, just okay. one sec. I just got into the I just got into the meeting myself. Okay. Good. Right. Sorry, Dan. Uh, I just I just no thought that there was no recording I'll wait, yet. I'll wait till the recording so that we can capture the all. In this meeting is being recorded and or transcribed. All right. We got the recording. So uh, I guess the first first order of business is uh, let's uh, vote on approval of the meeting minutes from last uh, week. All those. Other than going around, just all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Wait, I, I think you, 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 one of us, you one of us to make a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion. No, I was trying to, I was trying to speed up the process, but sure. Yeah, do you have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. So moved. Chris, second you second that? that? Yeah, second. Stephanie <clears throat> seconds it. All right, do we have uh, all those in, in favor? Aye. 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 Sounds good. Uh, minutes have been approved. Um, all right, and I see that Stephanie has uh, joined the meeting so we can get into the substance here. Um, I guess the most important note since our last call is that we were given some uh, updated budget information from the from the board, um, which uh, increases the uh, the budget that we were trying to operate to meet for, for proposal A. Um, that's, I think, coming out of some of the working of the subcommittees. It just looks like there's going to be additional hiring needs that the board is anticipating at this point. Um, so the kind of moral of the story for our uh, purposes are that uh, a lot of the fees had to get, especially in that prop, uh, proposal A, where we have to meet the fees, um, all, all got a boost uh, in order to hit the new fees. So in the previous uh, iterations, we were aiming for between like 1.4 million and, and 1.8 million. Um, it, it looks like the, the board's operating costs will be uh, kind of in those middle years around 2.5 million. Um, so a, a, a significant increase. Um, and so we need to aim a little above that for a couple of reasons. One, um, to pay back the, the deficit, which uh, or I guess it's just it's one reason, but to pay back that deficit that's going to be created. but. Um, that was estimated at 1.8 million as of FY24, but um, kind of with this increased hiring, I imagine that that will be a, a larger deficit um, because the, the fiscal note that the, they were operating off of didn't um, have the increased uh, staffing included into it. So, um, so the fees that you saw sent around uh, a few minutes ago uh, for proposal A includes that increased uh, fee. Um, for proposal B, uh, they'll probably look pretty familiar because they're pretty close to basically what we were talking about last time. That's the, the fees that we tried to balance raising revenue while also um, trying to create uh, uh, a more accessible market. So um, we'll jump into that in a, in a second, um, but just wanted to give that, that caveat of, of why these are going to look uh, a little different uh, than they did last, uh, last call. But the other thing, I guess, to note is that what we tried to do was continue to keep those ratios of costs uh, that we talked about on the last call so that um, so kind of the the uh, concept of fees and, and the rate of fees compared to each each license type uh, is the same as you saw but just the underlying number has been boosted a little bit to meet the additional costs uh, that are now being estimated um, so going on just and then the two reminders that we've uh, talked about throughout this uh, but that these proposed fees um, and these recommendations don't include any reduced fees for social equity, um, that those are being discussed in uh, a different subcommittee. Um, and we anticipate that uh, when all the subcommittees kind of make their proposals, that the final recommendations will include uh, those reduced fees um, that will kind of be attached over the top of, of these fees. And then the second one is just as a reminder, um, we have two fee proposals here, the first one being um, relatively large fees, um, which is to meet that statutory mandate of covering all of the costs. Um, and the second one being the uh, kind of lower fees that balance revenue production and uh, access to the market. So um, instead of sharing the spreadsheet, we just put it all into a PowerPoint, so I guess uh, the easiest thing is probably for me to uh, 
run through uh, these quickly and you can see where they are um, and then uh, have, have some discussion on it um, before we get into the votes um, rather than just stopping because I want to make sure that we get the full picture on the table before we, before we start any discussion. So um, here's, as we've talked about before, uh, we would have a kind of intent to apply fee um, or a, a kind of what we've called in the past a provisional license fee. This is that piece where uh, somebody could submit some information to the board, uh, a limited amount of information based on like who they are, what they're planning to do uh, for $500. Um, that kind of serves two purposes. One, it gives the board a sense of what the interest in uh, licenses are um, early on in the process so that they can make adjustments accordingly. Uh, and two, it also kind of uh, make sure that people are serious about um, starting down the licensing process before they um, before they kind of just start entering it and giving filing papers. Uh, the, the second part of that is the application fee. If you if you apply, uh, if you submit an intent to apply, um, your application fee would be uh, reduced by that amount. So um, if you you, you know, you're a small cultivator and you intend to cultivate, you submit your information on that $500 uh, attempt to apply. When you get your location set up um, and you're ready to fully apply, you're, you'd pay an additional $500 for your application fee. If you, if you didn't do the intent to apply, um, your application fee would be $1,000. Uh, yes, Savan? Um, yeah, just about one thing, not for this subcommittee, but for the board to think about for the future. Um, we'll need to, or the board will need to think about uh, what is too different um, between an intent to apply and, and apply? You know, details change sometimes for a business between that earlier part and the later part, and they'll need to figure out some sort of criteria to delineate. But this is a totally different application versus, yeah, that's a minor tweak. So it's just something to put on the radar. Yeah, thank you. That's a good point. And we'll, I think we'll, as we further define this in other subcommittees and, and going forward with regulations, we'll, we'll definitely have to make uh, make note of that and figure out. Uh, you know, I, I think these are pretty. Uh, it's mostly like who you are, like what your what your plan is, things like that for the intent to apply, and then a lot of the like location specific and, and stuff. So you will have to have some some nexus between the two, so that as you don't say you're, you know person or company a and then be an entirely different thing for for your for your license but um that is something we will work out um when we get further into this process uh the next one is uh kind of the the big one here uh these are the cultivation tiers uh and license fees so um what you'll see reflected here is a lot of what we talked about on monday um for the kind of ratios. So what we did for proposal A um, was uh, adjusted the tiers in the two, basically adjust the outdoor tiers and the indoor tiers so they mostly match. Although uh, to stay under an acre, instead of going up to the 50,000, we kept it um, at, at, uh, at uh, 43,560 uh, square feet. Um, the other thing that we did here was create a couple of different like internal ratios here the first one being that we basically stayed consistent in price per square feet in each each category um until we got um uh, except for the the acre uh, outdoor is slightly below because i think uh that will probably have some additional production controls just so that you're not packing an acre full of uh, you know there might be ways to design that so that you you can use an acre of land that's kind of set aside for this, but you know there's other restrictions so that it's not just a, a you know a, a, an acre jammed with um, cannabis plants. Um, the second ratio that you'll see is that we um, adjusted the ratio between outdoor and indoor cultivation so that in proposal A, the um, the fees are basically four times for for indoor. Um, we adjusted those down a little bit in proposal B, so they're they're twice. Um, not uh, mostly that was to bring. Uh, or I guess just to, to start over in proposal A, uh, these are as you can see pretty high fees that would make Vermont an outlier in a lot of respects um, for these size of cultivation for a market with unlimited licenses. Uh, we think that these 
fees are, are probably a, a bit too high for uh, for a, a, a sustainable market, but um, this is kind of where they probably need to be to get to um, to get to the to the revenue numbers uh, that we're we're trying to reach. Uh, for proposal B, we try to bring bring those back in line with uh, some of our kind of comparable states. Uh, these would be especially on the larger indoor. These are are comparable to where you would be in uh, in Maine and Massachusetts and, and, and states uh, that Vermont could be competing with. Um, we tried to keep the outdoor uh, and the lower tier licenses uh, much more affordable to try to create more um, access. Uh, and then I guess the one thing you probably will notice is that in the proposal B, um, we brought, we break the ratio when you get to those optional tiers. Um, we lowered them down a little bit because again, these are tiers that the board will probably implement if they're having trouble getting enough demand out of the other tiers. Uh, so we didn't want to have, well, we thought we'd make those, uh, com they're still more expensive, but comparably cheaper per square foot because if, if that's the case, the board's going to be looking. The board will want applicants for those licenses because they're going to be um, trying to increase the amount of supply in the overall market. So um, uh, I'll pause because I see that Devon has a, a question. Thanks, Dan. Um, these numbers are still uh, numbers of flower and canopy, correct? Uh, I think these are numbers, and Andrew. Uh, pop in, but I think these are it's flower and canopy for for outdoor and indoor is uh, the full um, cultivation size, right? But Andrew, I don't know if you're uh, available to pop on. I think that was where we where we were. Well, anyway, I'll, well, if he doesn't pop on, um, it, it occurred to me, we were trying to do uh, an acre instead of 50,000 because we thought that would be simpler. But in retrospect, if outdoor is flower and canopy, then the measurement of an acre is arbitrary because it's not going to be one rectangular acre that, that is their flower and canopy. So the farmer's going to have to figure out, hey, hey, uh, can this, you guys this row is flowering, this area is walking rows, this is whatever, and they're going to have to add up that square footage to figure out what it is. So we've saved them no hassle by making it what now looks to be an odd number of 43, 560 rather than a round number of 50. Hey, I think, on and Dan, can oh. you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now, Andrew. Okay, sorry, there's something weird going on with my headphones. Um, so this square footage applies, in my thought, to total cultivation area. So that would be vegetative, clone, mothers, as well as flowering canopy. Flowering canopy, depending on how you grow, it's a little different for outdoor. There's honestly far fewer outdoor growers, so there's less data on this, but it's usually about 50% flowering canopy versus your total square feet of cultivation area which would also include kind of the space between rows and things like that. Um, okay, it is thanks. Gonna be that, a, that makes sense. Yeah, it is going to be a question, you know, how do we can how do we consider what is ostensibly an outdoor grow in which a a grower is doing their mother plants or their clones or maybe their small veg small immature plants indoors. Um, it probably just end up combining that. Um, now as far as the 43,005 you know, the just under an acre. Um, this is, you know, it's basically just in, re in response to some, some requests from the board to have a tier that's lower. Uh, I think that it's, it's probably unlikely that you'll have a single outdoor grow in Vermont be that large given the size of the market and just how much inventory would end up coming online at once with a outdoor grow over 40,000 square feet. Um, so however they want to do it, right? Um, you know, I, I don't think any of us are really hard and fast on that. Um, and, you know, if we did a 40,000, if we did a 30,000, all of that obviously would be under an acre, uh, but just something con to consider. Um, any other questions here before we Flip through the the rest. We can kind of have a general conversation after uh, we get through all the rest of the recommendations uh, before we before we vote. But anything else here before I flip to the to retail? These and also just as a note, these are probably the biggest changes um, from yeah. from Monday's uh, call. Uh, everything else will look uh, pretty similar. But 
Um, I, I do want to point out as well, uh, thank you, Dan. This, again, this is Andrew. Um, these these free proposals in, in uh, free proposal B, in many ways on the per square foot metric, match those in Maine. So Maine, for their outdoor grows, had 75 cents a square foot for their annual fee uh, for outdoor and a dollar and a half per square foot um, for our indoor. And so that matches this. Obviously, the tiers are a little bit different, um, but that by and large is similar to, uh, you know, our, our neighbors to the, I guess not, not quite neighbors, but- uh, Not quite the, neighbors. Yeah, not quite neighbors to these. Um, and and here is uh, what we're proposing for retail. So you'll see that uh, after our discussion last week, or I guess I keep saying last week, it's Monday. It's been a long week. Uh, since our discussion Monday, um, uh, there was talk we and a need for additional revenue. We boosted the proposal A retail storefront uh, fee up um, a bit, um, and then kind of for proposal B. Uh, left it where I believe it was in proposal A last time, um, and then uh, I think uh, I think seeds and clones went up a little bit as well uh, again uh, in proposal A, but not not for kind of proposal B. Um, so and then since the limited and farmer licenses aren't things that we are um, recommending here uh, because they still are contingent on other regulations, uh, those fees stayed the same. I think those are probably reasonable fees if the board's able to kind of figure out how to um, how to make that work, which I think will be topic of discussion in, in uh, future, in different subcommittees or in future conversation. Um, so th that's retail. Uh, again, manufacturing tiers both um, ticked up a bit, um, uh, again, to cover those uh, those increased costs. Um, but are still pretty similar in like the ratio of uh, between tier one and tier two. Uh, and then rest of the licenses are here. And I guess the most important thing uh, is what we did for the integrated licenses after some comments last time, we just explicitly tied the fee of the integrated license to um, basically the constituent parts of that uh, so that the proposal fees are the combined price of a uh, uh, a 25,000 square foot grow facility, a, um, a storefront retailer, uh, and a uh, tier one manufacturer. Um, we didn't include the wholesale uh, in that just because uh, a lot of the other cultivators will also be able to wholesale, so we didn't think that was kind of an extra cost. Um, but. Uh, so that's that's how we aligned those, um, and I think the rest of those are, uh, as we've talked about, except for we're going to make it explicit that the testing laboratories uh, fees are, will be kind of integrated with those hemp fees, as we've talked about, so that we're not double hitting the testing facilities because we want to make sure that we uh, we need testing facilities to avoid bottlenecks, so we don't want to um, try to fund this uh, process on their backs. We want to encourage them as much as possible. Stephanie, I see you have a question. Yeah, um, I had a question that was brought up at the last meeting that um, wholesaling, wholesaler license was allowed to process as well. And so I'm curious, and also Dan, you mentioned that, you know, like you set up these tiers and you wanna make sure you everybody doesn't have the same ability in every, or not tiers, excuse me, in all the different licenses, you don't wanna have the same ability. So I, I have a question about whole, and I haven't read the definition recently, so how does, I mean, I understand what a wholesaler does, like that's obvious, but with respect to the definition in Act 164, is it, it seems broader than just yes. buying and selling and transporting. So I'm wondering yeah. if... <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, it did. And we did actually, and I did bring it up, we did make an adjustment to that. It, it uh, that was uh, our, our oversight. Um, so it seems like they are able to, um, to like white label and do some packaging. Uh, which is why we also, um, if we flip back and forth, we actually made the, uh, at, at one point, I think the tier two manufacturer and the wholesaler were equally priced. Um, and we adjusted that slightly um, because uh, we were thinking that a lot of that uh, white labeling would be done through a tier two manufacturing license. Um, 
but uh, it, it'll now be, we didn't want to make the tier two manufacturing license and a wholesaler license the same if, if, uh, if there's kind of more power in uh, the more authority in the tier two. So like you can make an infused product in this tier two. So we raised this cost. We raised both costs again, as we raised all the costs, but um, uh, we tried to also just slightly adjust it to make it, to try to value the license types more appropriately. I don't know, it, it's probably still a little close. Uh, maybe that tier two, um, uh, tier two manufacturing license could go up a little bit. Um, uh, you know, but we were trying to think, we've had some public comments about wanting to try to have like a low priced uh, license for people to make infused products. Um, so we wanted to try to keep that pretty, a pretty low, uh, fee license um but but yeah we tried to adjust it but it, but it, like let us know if there, you think there should be some more more adjustments in here well and i'm not concerned about the fee i'm, I'm actually more concerned about the definition of wholesaler <laughs> and whether yeah. or not there's a recommendation potentially and i know it would be a change to the law that we that there that that gets a little more boxed in changed but, um, but i mean i'm I, just laying that out <laughs> yeah I d didn't anticipate um, further defining any of the statutory definitions, um, but uh, again, that might be something, and th again, this is a little, um, you know, a lot of this will have to depend on how the rest of the, uh, a lot of this probably depend on like the, the compliance subcommittee and some of these other subcommittees that are working on, um, you know, transportation rules and security rules and basically like how the mechanics of a lot of this stuff is going to work, I think, um, to try to fill out the uh, kind of outer bounds of what each of these licenses are, are able to do. Um, but we can, if you want, we can try to uh, make a recommendation with a note that, I mean, is your, it, you three are the subcommittee members. So if you like want to figure, if you want to propose a, uh, a different definition or a different uh, way to, to kind of approach the wholesale license. Um, I think we're open to it. Absolutely. I guess we'll um, leave it there for now. I don't know that we we actually have any. I don't know. Devon and <laughs> we're not all weighing in. <laughs> so outside of drawing attention to what exists. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll finish this little presentation and then we'll kind of open it up for just a, a discussion because um, I think we're mostly done, right? That was the, um, oh, so then last bit, uh, employee registration fee uh, would be $100 um, uh, collected biannually. Um, that is, um, uh, we had to propose that to make sure it factored into the uh, the overall cost. Um, again, if there's if there's strong thoughts on that at all, um, we can we can adjust accordingly. And then the last thing is that local. Uh, I, should, I shouldn't use the word processing. That's like the local fee for processing the paperwork, uh, not processing uh, cannabis, um, which we've talked about on I think it was two calls ago, where I think everyone agreed that. Um, it's $100 maximum um, for the kind of paper shuffling portion of the local approval. Um, so that that hasn't changed. Um, so that's it for our new proposals. Here's the dynamics when we run through um, the different fee proposals. Um, again, dynamic two we think is the most likely one. Um, and our new target is somewhere north of um, probably like 2.8, 2.9 million, um, just to cover costs and pay back the the uh, coming deficit. Um, so we aimed slightly high on proposal A because uh, we kind of think that with some of these higher fees, uh, we might not get the same number of licenses that we uh, anticipated in in dynamic uh, two originally. Um, and then in proposal B. Uh, you'll see that we're we're not that far behind what was our kind of original target uh, because those figures are actually pretty close to where we were um, on proposal A on Monday, um, but we're we're a little bit and in that case um, uh, the board uh, would be looking to have their kind of operations budget supplemented by some of the tax revenue that would be um, 
uh, coming in. So uh, that is our uh, updated presentation on fees. Um, why don't we uh, take a few minutes here uh, to see if the subcommittee has any um, thoughts or concerns um, with kind of these new uh, revisions? Because I know they, um, you know, they 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 changed quite a bit since uh, uh, since you saw them on Monday. Um, but uh, so I'll pause. You've probably heard enough of me already. Um, any thoughts from Chris or Zavon or Stephanie? Yeah, Chris here. Um, to continue Stephanie's questions, which I think were spot on, um, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around this wholesale license as well. Um, you know, just to because I know that some of the other licenses will will have that ability. So it's it's the wholesale distribution, basically white labeling. And what else? Yeah, give me one sec. I'll pull up the exact uh, okay. the exact definition. Um, Uh, they are able to purchase, process, transport, uh, and sell cannabis uh, or cannabis products. Um, I think the I think the issue is that. Uh, process uh, does not appear to be defined yet uh, in the statute. So uh, this is kind of one of those spots where we are uh, slightly over our skis um, because we don't have a, we don't have a like set of definitions for the regulations yet. Um, but I think it's up to the board. We can probably like one of the recommendations here is uh, or one of the things that we could possibly do, and um, we can discuss that is that if the, the subcommittee would like to, we could recommend the board define process in regards to the wholesale license in a certain manner um, to kind of more make clearer definition between what's, what can be done under a wholesale license and what can be done under a, um, like a tier two manufacturing license. I'd be careful there, Dan. It's just uh, if you're using the same word to mean different things, in different licenses that can become confusing and we always want regulation to be clear yeah i mean I, what i would to not to get nerdy if we're if we are what we would probably do is define process uh just meaning process throughout the regulations um but then the other provide a different def definition for other processing activities, I guess. I'm, I'm probably talking myself into a circle here, but there's like ways that you can define things clearly based on, um, we would probably just have to use different um, different definitions. We saw this in, uh, there was a tough definition, I think it was in like a, in Mississippi's uh, original medical ballot question that defined process confusingly and, and we're trying to get around it by using a bunch of other definitions. Stephanie? Yeah, I was just I was looking at the definition of manufacturer and it doesn't use the word process. And while I don't know where else process specifically or manufacturer is used specifically in Act 164, there does appear to be a distinction, at least that process is not included in the definition of manufacturer. It's just manufacturing. So, you know, just to um, think about, you know, maybe we need to more clearly define manufacturer. Um, is another opportunity as well, but. Um, so any other, any other thoughts? I guess there's, a, it's a two part question here. The first part being, uh, would the subcommittee want, um, want to, take that on as further defining those two, trying to further define those two uh, words, I would probably want to check to see if another um, another subcommittee is already working on definitions. I'm not actually sure. And if, uh, I don't know if, if Tom or, or Gina happens to know if, if any subcommittee has gotten into that part of the nitty gritty yet, I wouldn't want to be stepping on other, other toes. Um, if not, um, 
we can we can try to come up with a, come up with definitions that I think would work um, and maybe all right, let me stop first uh, if anyone else knows if another subcommittee is already working on this uh, jump in and, and let us know not that I know time sounds, sounds good so then I think it could be up to us um, what what uh, I guess it's probably hard to define it. Uh, I don't think I'm skilled enough to uh, verbally come up with a definition that would work for both of these and, and talk about them here. But we can talk about what we want to cover and then maybe uh, circle back with uh, with some definition. Um, is that something that the board, the subcommittee, would be interested in doing? Is trying to further define kind of those words so we can distinguish between tier two cultivator and uh, what they can do and a wholesaler and what they can do. Hey Dan, this is Steve Um I, I, I would almost punt on this uh, and, and kick it up to the board, give them an opportunity to at least informally check in with some legislators as to what their original legislative intent was when they drafted it. I'm imagining based on this that what processing really means is something akin to packaging, right? That a wholesaler can buy in bulk from a farmer and the wholesaler can be who's responsible to you know, subdivide it. Maybe it's something as innocuous as that, and maybe we don't even want to allow that, but I would want to give the board the chance to check in with the legislators and, and learn a little bit more of what they, they had intended when they drafted it. This is Stephanie. That's, that's, I think that's fine. Um, I, I just wanted to draw, uh, or draw attention to it um, to make sure that, it, that we, that we, that it, it is explored at some point in time, either by the board or by another committee. Um, and that we were aware, reviewing the fees, that this, there's a little bit of ambiguity here as to, to what the wholesaler does. So. Do we want to, um, thank you. And it will certainly be explored uh, when uh, the board starts putting pen to paper on, on trying to make these, uh, these regulations all fit with each other. Do we, as a as the market structure uh, subcommittee, uh, who is kind of charged with getting these uh, fees out, uh, fee recommendations to the board uh, as soon as possible, do we want to have a quick discussion about whether or not we think these? Like, do you want to tie these proposed wholesale fees to allowing wholesalers to uh, repackage, um, or do you want to like? When we vote on this, how much? And here, here, I'll, I'll make a proposal. I'll, 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 I'll make a proposal for us to consider um, that we work follow the working assumption that what a wholesaler does is they buy from folks and distribute to stores, and they are really what we think of as a traditional distributor, and that it's up to the board to give them any more power they think fit that matches what this fee is. So you know, let the board decide how they're going to define processing, whether it includes you know subdividing or not or whatever. Um, but we're thinking that the, the main function they're doing is their distributors. And uh, if there's more than that, that's up to the board's discussion. That, that's, that's my proposal. Uh, I think that works. I, I guess we should take a little, uh, does that work for the other members of the subcommittee? Uh, yeah, yes, I agree, Chris Wall. Yes, thank you. Perfect. All right, um, slight, slight crisis averted by, uh, by giving the board more more decisions, so they certainly don't have enough yet to make. Um, the uh, any other uh, thoughts on um, uh, on on these revenue projections or on the license fees before we kind of move on? Um, and I think the next step will basically be voting. I for the I guess for the uh, everyone's education for where we're going. I moved. Uh, the public comment period up because I thought it didn't make sense to have public comment after the subcommittee voted. Um, so I figured we'd pause for, for uh, public comment um, when we kind of finish this discussion and then come uh, back uh, and have the subcommittee members vote on what we should recommend to the board. So um, anything else for discussion before we throw it open for a moment of public comment? Hearing none, and I guess does that work for um, does that work for the board, um, James, or is there other is going out of order wrong? It felt like we no. should probably have public comment before the subcommittee um, took a vote, just in case somebody 
from the public makes a uh, impassioned argument that sways sways votes. No, it, it makes sense to me. If any members of the public come in in the intervening time for the for the remainder, you know, at the normal public comment time, I'll let you know. But um, I'm fine with holding public comment now. Okay. Um, is there anyone there who is uh, interested in making a public comment? Yeah. Oh, please. How you doing, everyone? This is Ebo with Gaston. Um, this is just kind of on the wholesaler, um, the wholesaler license. In my mind, it makes most sense to really have the wholesalers act as a distributor um, and not necessarily packaging. I, I feel like giving them that power to package could just potentially open up a can of worms for the way that they perceive that, that the wording in that law maybe. Um, I think packaging and, and manufacturing should be with a manufacturer and then a wholesaler could then take that product and distribute it out to other retail locations. Just seems to make the most sense to me. Um, and yeah, that was really it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the room for public comment? All right, I think, I think that's it, Dan. But again, if anyone comes in for that kind of 150 time frame, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, all right, so I think we are um, ready to move on to, to kind of our official votes here, um, unless anyone else from the subcommittee has anything else they want to raise before we, before we get to it. But um, uh, hearing none, I guess uh, our first, I tried to break this down into a, a handful of um, easier yes or no questions. But the first question, I guess, is uh, that I put to the subcommittee is, uh, is everybody still uh, in, um, in agreement, I guess, that this subcommittee will make a set of two different recommendations to the board, uh, one which would cover costs um, as are required in the statute, um, and then one that was that proposal B that is a uh, more uh, balanced approach that would both try to raise significant revenue, um, but would also create uh, lower barriers to, to entry for, for certain, um, certain businesses looking to enter the market uh, with the caveat that uh, if that is the case, the, some of the tax, the board will have to recommend to the legislature that some of the tax revenue uh, is used to, to cover operating costs. So um, I guess, uh, let's take a take a vote on whether that is still the uh, format that we would like to go for. Um, so, uh, I guess I'll just I, I'll I'll just ask by the first one I see. Um, Stephanie. Yes. Chris. Yes. Yvonne. Yeah. Great. Um, and then now we'll go into like the the main questions is. Uh, the first one is rather than going through each of these individually, I think we should vote on them as a as a package. Um, so the first one, uh, it, the next vote is on proposal A. Um, uh, vote we're recommending the license types and fees in proposal A uh, in order to uh, cover if the if the board needs to recommend fees that would cover the cost of the operations of their uh, activities. Um, that those license types are kind of as uh, defined or, uh, or uh, I guess not defined, but as we're assuming uh, according to kind of our conversation so that the wholesaler is uh, kind of the distributor model, the retail uh, in retail storefront includes both seeds and uh, a lot, includes the ability to sell seeds and clones, um, things along those lines. Uh, so I guess the same question again, uh, are you in approval or uh, yay or nay on, on the B proposal in proposal A? Um, I'll stay in the same order. Stephanie? Yes. Chris? Yes. Yvonne? Yeah. Great. Um, same question for uh, proposal B. Uh, Stephanie? Yes. Chris? Yes. Yvonne? Yes. Great. Um, that's, those are our main, our main questions, but there was two other things that we've talked about 
that I don't think are incorporated into that previous vote. Uh, and I just wanted to give you an opportunity to be on the record uh, for it. I guess the, the first one being um, that do you vote to recommend that the board explore retail limited licenses and retail farmer licenses if uh, concerns over safety and market impact uh, can be addressed? Uh, Stephanie? Yes. Chris? Yes. Devon? Yes. And then um, the last one was uh, on a proposal, I think, uh, Chris made a couple calls ago, but that uh, the board, as, as much as possible, prioritize getting those retail seed and clone licenses uh, earlier in the process so that outdoor cultivators and home cultivators have access to legal sources uh, as soon as possible. And we'll let Chris lead off since I think this was his proposal. Yes, please. Okay. Stephanie? Yes. And Sivan? Yeah, and just FYI, I'm about to switch from my computer to my phone. I'm calling him right now. Okay, um, we will give you a sec, but that's uh, that's that's kind of the uh, all we had for. All right, here, let me let you in. Sivan, you back in? I am. Thank you. Great. Um, so we might actually have wrapped up a little early. Uh, that was kind of all of our. Uh, our questions, I think we have the proposals, I guess for next steps, um, we will send these up to the board, um, although they have uh, been digitally watching, diligently watching us uh, throughout this process. So they are very aware of the um, fee proposals and your recommendations, but we'll send those up to the board as recommendations of this subcommittee. Um, again, there's other subcommittees working on fees, and most notably the social equity uh, fee, so I think there'll probably be some sort of reduced fee for certain qualifying applicants that will kind of be attached over the top of these. Um, but uh, and then I think the next step is that we are putting together a uh, or the board is putting together recommendations to the legislature for fees um, uh, going forward. So uh, I think that that is actually all I have. I don't know if any of the other board members or subcommittee members have any um, questions or comments that they want to bring up. I think, I think uh, the plan though is to actually uh, end this subcommittee um, and have uh, the subcommittee members join some of the other subcommittees that are um, uh, in progress working on some of these other topics. Um, and then uh, I think there's, I think we might be seeing you again uh, in a little bit when we have a some other conversations about um, some future licenses and things uh, that will probably get started a little later in October or November. But um, anything else from any uh, subcommittee member um, that they want to bring up now? Nope. Uh, is there anything from the board um, that, that you'd like to, to bring up or have us address in the last few minutes? Or um, did I get the... Uh, the plan going forward uh, off, or is there any corrections that are needed there? Uh, no, I mean, I, as the chair of the board, just thank you, you know, Dan and VS and NACB for your work, and of course, Chris and Stephanie and Savan for volunteering your time. I think you added a lot of great input and direction uh, to this process, and uh, we'd like, as Dan mentioned, we'd like to um, kind of continue our relationship with you, um, move you around to some of the various other subcommittees where I think your expertise um, could be utilized. Um, and I'll be in touch with you about that and scheduling those. And I, you know, I would just say that you know, on this market structure, uh, we have to present this to the legislature and it might need some tweaking down the road. Um, and so, uh, if you guys could potentially have an ad hoc meeting here and there down the road, uh, it might be necessary. Um, so, but th thank you for the work on this. It's been a real treat to wa watch you guys uh, do your thing. Thank you, yeah, and we are uh, certainly aware that um, things can might need adjustments and uh, when the legislature starts weighing in, there could be additional questions and I, I know on the 
on the VFS side, at least, we are happy to to pop back with ad hoc meetings whenever whenever needed, and, and hope uh, everyone else will be happy to join us. I'd like to thank everyone that's been involved too. Drinking out of a fire hose has never been so enjoyable for me. <laughs> thank you as well, Stephanie. I've learned a lot. <laughs> well, all right, and I have to thank everyone too. Thank you all. <laughs> Yeah, no, this has been um, this has been good, and, and thank you again. I, it, it couldn't have been easy to have. Um, you know, we threw a lot of information and a lot of stuff at you very quickly, and um, I think we worked through this in a in a pretty uh, about as quickly and um, you know as orderly as as, as possible uh, given the circumstances. So um, I want to thank everyone for being uh, engaged and, and active. So uh, with nothing else uh, to say, I think um, I will. Uh, do I have a motion to uh, adjourn the, the market structure subcommittee? Motion to adjourn. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chris, uh, any, will somebody second it? Stephanie second. Second, Yvonne. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those against? And we are officially adjourned. And I gave everyone, we gave everyone 12 minutes back. So. Uh, enjoy your Thursday, um, and I will be. Thank in touch you all. You did a great. This meeting is no.